In this video I'm going to show you how to create a subsite of an existing SharePoint team site. So a subsite is basically a completely new site in which you can have calendar, contacts, documents, whatever you want, but it's subordinate or underneath are an existing team site. So think of it like a tree structure or a directory structure. A subsite is an area, is a complete site underneath the existing area. So the way we do that is we first navigate to the parent, so where we want to create the subsite beneath, and then we select the site contents option over here from the quick launch menu. Now to do this, to do this configuration, you'll typically need to be an administrator of the SharePoint site. So ordinary users generally can't create subsites. Now at the bottom of our site contents you'll notice there is an option here under subsites. So this will list any existing subsites we have but we have a hyperlink to create a new subsite which we will select. So when we create a new subsite we need to obviously give the subsite a name. We also need to give it a description and what I'm going to call that is simply give it a URL. So again, best practice is to make the URL as short as possible. Uh, once we've given the website uh, its URL, we then need to select a template. Now, you'll see that we have a number of options. We can move through the tabs here and select from Enterprise, Publishing, um, and also custom options here. But typically what you're going to want to create is we're going to want to create another team site. So basically these templates are predefined layouts for your team site. And as you say, you can create a template from an existing site and then apply it here if you have configured it appropriately. But in this case, what I'm going to do is simply create a team site. Once I've selected the template I want to use, I now need to select the permissions. So how are my permissions going to be handled? Now, I can have them so that they are the same as the parent, so they inherit um, from the parent, basically flow down through the structure, or I can break this inheritance and I can create unique permissions. So this means that users have to be given uh, rights uniquely to get access to this subsite. So for example, if you want to create a subsite that only a select number of users have access to, then you want to use unique permissions. If you want to create a subsite that everybody can have access to just as they do at the parent, then you leave it set to use the same permissions. The final option I've got here is whether to use the top link bar from the parent site. So that means you'll see the same navigation at the top level as you do at the bottom level. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change that to yes and I'm going to hit create. So that's now going to go off and create a subsite for us, an area below our parent uh, and configure that for us and make that ready to use. Now once that has completed will then be able to go in and customize that. So this is the subsite. You'll see that it is now complete. What we've got is obviously the subsite name, uh, the look and the feel. So for example, what I'm going to do just to uh, show that this is different, I'm going to go into the options here for the cog, then I'm going to change the look. So I'm going to quickly go in and basically change the look and the feel of this subsite so that you can see there are differences between the two. So again, we just, uh, for example, select the orange look and feel. We go to uh, try it out. And then what we'll do is we'll just accept that and we'll see that that has a completely different look and feel from our existing parent site. Okay, so we're just going to skip through this and select the option to uh, keep what we see here and that will then rebrand this subsite with um, that theme that we've selected. So again, if we go back to our subsite, so this, remember, is the area that we've just created. So if I click on the navigation because I chose to use the same navigation, you'll see that I'm taken back to my parent site. This is the area that I created the subsite underneath. Now if I go back to site contents, what we'll see here is that um, we have the subsite we just created underneath um, our parent site. So let's go in and create a, another new subsite. So in this case, I'm going to call it subsite2. Um, I'm going to call, give it a URL and I'm going to again use the uh, team site um, template to do that. 
Now what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to elect to use unique permissions. Okay, so again, I'm also going to use the navigation from the parent. So when I select unique permissions during the process of creating the subsite, uh, SharePoint is going to prompt me for to create some basic user groups for the security on this site. Now when it creates this, I'm going to typically get a visitors, which is read only. I'm going to get a members, which is a read and write or a contribute. And I'm going to get an owners. Now the person that creates the subsite is automatically added as a member and as an owner. Now I can go in and I can uh, edit the names of these groups if I desire. I can also use an existing site uh, group that I have in my site collection, but I'm happy with this. So I'm going to go OK, and this again will create a subsite, a subsite number two for us, and basically we can then go in and start customizing it. But the important thing to remember here is what's happened is I've created unique permissions, so I'd need to go in and add individual users and add their rights into the groups within this subsite. So if I go in here and look at site settings and go into the site permissions we'll see that the site permissions are basically there are the three groups security groups I just created these are the only ones that have access to that now if I go back to my parent and then for example go back into my subsite one so this is the one that was created that simply inherits those rights if I go in here again and have a look at the uh, site settings and look at the site permissions you'll see that all the uh, rights from the parent have now flown down into this sub site so they remain the same you'll also see that I have uh, an indication here that the permissions do inherit and you can see that I can stop inheriting permissions up here if I do desire that so again we can create as many sub sites um, as we want uh, below a uh, parent site. So I can go in here and, for example, create a third subsite. So what I'm going to do here is create a third site and just to show you the differences in the templates. So in this case, what I'm going to do is select to create a community site rather than a team site. I'll use the same permissions and I'll also use the top link bar from the parent. So I'll now create that. And what you'll see is because I've based this third subsite um, off a different template than the previous two, the look and the feel will be slightly different. So that's one of the advantages of using SharePoint templates. It allows you to create subsites quickly and easily. So again, here's our subsite number three. You'll see that the look and the feel is completely different from the other two because it's based on a community template. Now at any stage we can obviously go back to our parent, go into our site contents and we can navigate to any of these sites. Now we can navigate to these sites directly uh, using the URL. So again if you right mouse click on here and we open this in a new tab for example, this will take us to our first site. If you right mouse click on here and open in a new tab and then do the same for the third subsite we can obviously navigate to each one of these subsites uh, directly simply by using the URL and again importantly notice how they're all different and these areas can be customized to suit uh, your needs so for particular needs and they can be customized around security so that only certain users have access to it so typically best practice would be is to create a parent site which every user can see and then you may create a subsite for admin or finance a second subsite for human resources and maybe a third subsite for engineering or projects so again helps you divide up your information make it manageable um, because it's in smaller chunks and then give the right people access to those areas so that's a general overview of how to create subsites in SharePoint Online and some of the benefits they do provide. So I thank you very much for watching this video.